Hi there, so today's lesson 9.4 is extending sequences. Our objectives today to recognize an arithmetic sequence and a geometric sequence, to be able to describe and continue special sequences, to use the term to term rule to work out more terms in a sequence. Let's just check our prior knowledge before we start. So you should be able to find the term to term rule for a sequence. So for example, in the sequence three, five, seven, nine, the rule is add two or plus two as we add two to each number to get to the next number. Things you need for this lesson, you need your maths book or some paper to write on, a pen or a pencil and a calculator if you want to keep one handy. OK, we're going to start then by looking at arithmetic sequences. So an arithmetic sequence goes up or down in equal steps. So in the example there, 4, 11, 8, 5, 2, it's arithmetic because it goes down in steps of three. So it's found by either adding or subtracting from one term to the next. So let's have a look at some sequences and decide if they are arithmetic. So our first one then, we've got 3, 6, 9, 12 and 15. So from 3 to 6, we've added 3. From 6 to 9, we've added 3. Then we add 3 again and we add 3 again. So that one is arithmetic as it goes up by 3 each time. So each jump from one number to the next number is exactly the same. OK, our second sequence then. So from 30 to 20, we've gone down by 10. 20 to 0, we've gone down by 20. 0 to minus 30, we've gone down by 30. So we can already see we're not changing by the same amount each time. So that one is not arithmetic as it doesn't go down by the same number each time. Uh, our last one then are multiples of 12. So remember, multiples of 12 means the 12 times table. So if you're not sure, you can write down your 12 times table, 12, 24, 36, 48, and then find out if it's going up or down by the same amount. Now, it is arithmetic as it goes up by 12 each time. And that's true for all of our times tables. So all of our times tables are arithmetic sequences. OK, your turn now then. So you need to decide for each of these sequences, is it an arithmetic sequence or not? Pause the video. Have a go now. OK, so looking at the first one then, we've gone from three to five. So that's adding two. Five to six only adds one. Six to eight is adding two. Then we're adding one. So we're not adding the same amount each time. So no, it's not an arithmetic sequence. OK, our next one then, we've gone from 0 0.5 to 1.5. So that's going up by one. 1.5 to 2.5, that's going up by one. 2.5 to 3.5, up by one. 3.5 to 4.5, up by one. So we're adding one each time. So yes, it is arithmetic as it goes up by one each time. Uh, this one, hopefully we can uh, see straight away. Look, it started by going up, OK, and then it's gone down and then it's going up again. So without even working out the numbers between, I can see that it's gone up, then down, then up. So it can't be an arithmetic sequence. Our last one, then we've gone down by two, down by two, down by two. And we've continually gone down by two. So yes, that one is arithmetic as it goes down by two each time. So our key learning point there, to be arithmetic, it must go up or down by the same number each time. So either by adding or subtracting. OK, we're now going to have a look then at a geometric sequence. So in contrast to the arithmetic sequence, the geometric sequence goes up or down by multiplying or dividing by a number. So in the example here, we've got to get from 1 to 2, we've multiplied by 2. 2 to 4, we've multiplied by 2. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. So in this case, our rule is multiplied by 2. So it's a geometric sequence. OK, let's have a look at this sequence then. Can we work out the next two terms? Well, we can straight away see this one's gone up by 2. This one's gone up by 6. So we know it's not arithmetic, so it must be uh, perhaps a geometric one. 
So to get from 1 to 3, I could times by 3. From 3 to 9, I could times by 3. 9 times 3 is 27. So the term to term rule to get from one number to the next is times 3. So it is a geometric sequence. So the next two terms in our sequence then, I would do 27 times 3, which is 81. And then our new answer, 81 times 3, which is 243. So our next two terms are 81 and 243. So with the geometric sequence, we're looking and we can see they're not going up by the same amount each time. So then we need to start thinking if it's getting bigger, are we multiplying? If it's getting smaller, we might be dividing. OK, let's try another one then. What are the next two terms in this sequence? So we're a thousand, then a hundred. So this one's getting smaller. So we're going to be looking at dividing. So what do I need to divide a thousand by to get a hundred? Well, if I do a thousand divided by ten, I get a hundred. A hundred divided by ten is ten. Ten divided by ten is one. So our rule is divide by ten. So I now need to do 1 divided by 10. Well, 1 divided by 10 is 0 0.1. Then we take that number, 0 0.1 divided by 10, and we get 0 0.01. So the next two terms in this sequence are 0 0.1 and 0 0.01. So for some of these geometric sequences, you might want to use your calculator if you're getting into particularly big um, or small numbers just to check those. OK. So your turn now then. So you've been given the first term in a sequence and you've been given the rule for that geometric sequence. See if you can write down the first four terms in the sequence. Remember, you already have term number one. So you need to write that one down and then the next three following on from there. OK, pause the video. Have a go now. All right, so our first one then, we start with term three. We're multiplying by 10, so we get 30, 300, 3,000. For the second one, we're starting with 10. We're multiplying by two, so we've got 20, 40, 80. Our next one, we're starting at 500, and we're dividing by five. So that gives us 100, then 20, and then four. And the next one, we're starting at 800, and we're multiplying by a half. Now, remember, multiplying by a half is the same as dividing by two. So that means half of something. So 800, 400, 200 and 100. So just make sure you're happy that if you know the term and you know the rule to get from one number to the next. So we always use our newest number to find the next number along. All right, then. So now that we've looked at arithmetic or geometric sequences, you need to decide if these are arithmetic, geometric or neither. So just a quick reminder, arithmetic, go up or down by the same amount by adding or subtracting. Geometric, go up or down by multiplying or dividing by the same number each time. If it does neither of those, then it is not arithmetic or geometric. Pause the video, have a go now, see if you can decide which ones they are. All right, so looking at our first one then, we've gone from 3 to 6, so that's adding 3. Then we're adding 12, then we're adding 12. So it's not arithmetic um, because we're adding 3, then 6, then 12, so different amounts each time. So now let's check for geometric. If I do 3 to get to 6, I could times by 2. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. 24 times 2 is 48. So that one's a geometric sequence. OK. Um, OK, sorry, there's a quick typing error there. So we were timesing by 2. Our next one then. So from 2 to 4, we can add 2. From 4 to 6, we can add 2. Add two, add two. So we're adding the same amount each time, so that makes it arithmetic because we're adding two each time. Our next one then. So two to get to two, that's, we've not added any. Two to four, we've added two. Then we've added two. Then we've added four. So it's not arithmetic, we're not adding the same each time. Can we multiply? 
Uh, so 2 to get to 2, we'd have to do 2 times 1 is 2. But 2 times 1, oh, is not 4. So we're not multiplying either. So it is neither of those. It's not going up um, by adding or subtracting or multiplying or dividing. What about the next one then? So from 1 to 4, we add 3. From 4 to 9, we add 5. So that's not arithmetic because that's different. Uh, to get from 1 to 4 by multiplying, I could do 1 times 4 is 4. But then I would have to do 4 times 4, and that's not 9. So that's not going up in a geometric pattern either. So that one's neither of them. This one then, so we've got minus 10. To get to minus 25, I'd have to take away 15. To get to minus 40, I'd have to take away 15. To minus 5, take away 15, take away 15. So we're subtracting 15 every time. So that's arithmetic. Remember, arithmetic is adding or subtracting. And finally, our last one. If the first term is 4 and the rule is add 6, well, that tells us we're going to add 6 to every single number. Remember, going up by adding or subtracting every time is arithmetic. So arithmetic, we add 6. Make sure you're happy with those different sequences before you move on. OK, our second objective today then is to look at special sequences. We looked at some special sequences in one of our previous lessons. Um, today, we're going to have a look at the Fibonacci sequence. So the Fibonacci sequence um, is named after an Italian mathematician, um, although it was used a lot longer before he was born. Um, but he's, his name is given to this sequence. So it's a sequence bound by adding the two previous numbers together. So if you start with 0 and 1, and then we add 0 and 1 together, 0 plus 1 is 1. Then we add the last two, 1 plus 2 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. So we add the previous two numbers to get the next number. So those are the first seven numbers of our Fibonacci sequence. We want the 8th, 9th, 10th and 11th. So to find the next one, we add the last two. So the last two were 5 and 8. So 5 plus 8 is 13. Now we add the last two. So we now got 8 and 13, which gives us 21. Then 13 and 21, which gives us 44. 21 and 44 is 65. So the next four terms are 13, 21, 44 and 65. So by adding the last two values together, it gives us the next value along. Now, other sequences are said to be in the Fibonacci style if they follow that same pattern. So if they follow the pattern of adding the previous two numbers to get the next number, we say they are Fibonacci style sequences. So, for example, this would be another Fibonacci style of sequence. So if I start with 3 and 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 3 plus 6 is 9, 6 plus 9 is 15, 9 plus 15 is 24. So it follows that same rule. Or this one here. If I start with 10 and 10, 10 plus 10 is 20, 10 plus 20 is 30, 20 plus 30 is 50, 30 plus 50 is 80. So it follows that same pattern. So any sequence following that pattern is Fibonacci style. So there we are, your turn then. Have a go with these sequences in the Fibonacci style. They've been started for you. You need to find the next four terms in each of those sequences. Pause the video. Have a go now. OK, so for our first one, then we had five plus five is ten. So we need to do five plus ten, which is fifteen. 10 plus 15 is 25, then 40, then 65. For the next one, we had 7 and 7. 7 plus 7 was 14, so we need to do 7 plus 14, which was 21. 14 plus 21 is 35, and we carry on. We get 56 and 91. We can do exactly the same with our negative numbers. Minus 1 plus minus 1 is minus 2. Minus 1 plus minus 2 is minus 3. Minus 2 plus minus 3 is minus 5. 
And if we carry on in that same way, we get minus 8 and minus 13. So they can be positive or they can be negative. If they follow that style, though, then they're said to be in the Fibonacci style of sequence. OK, so a population of rabbits in a field over six months is recorded. It follows a Fibonacci style sequence. How long will it be? before there are more than 200 rabbits in the field. So you've been given the months across the top. You've been given the start of the Fibonacci style sequence. So two plus two is four, two plus four is six. You need to work out how many months it will be before there are more than 200 rabbits. Pause the video, have a go now. OK, so if we continue the rest of the sequence then, so if we want to have month seven, we will need to do 10 plus 16. That's 26. For month eight, we do our 16 plus 26, which is 42. For nine, we've got 26 plus 42 is 68. Month 10, 42 plus 68 is 110. Month 11, 68 plus 110 is 178. Month 12, 110 plus 178 is 288. So we wanted to know when there will be more than 200. So after 12 months, there are 288. So at 12 months, there are more than 200 rabbits. OK, our last objective then is to continue to look at our term to term rules and extend those. So a sequence has the first term of minus four. The term to term rule is to add five and then multiply by two. So we've got two stages to work through for this problem. We have to add five to the number first and then we're going to multiply by two. So the first five terms of this sequence. So our first term, remember, we were told is minus four. So to find our next term, we're going to take our minus 4 and we add 5 to it. Minus 4 plus 5 is 1. And we take that new answer 1 and we're going to then multiply it by 2. 1 times 2 is 2. Our next one then, we're going to start then with our number 2. So we take our number 2, we're going to add 5 to it to get 7 and times it by 2 to get 14. So we're just doing two steps to each number. Remember, we're using the last number to find the next one. So now we're going to start with 14. We're going to add 5 to it and times it by 2, and we get 38. And if we start with 38 and add 5 and times it by 2, we get 86. So the first five terms in this sequence are minus 4, 2, 14, 38, and 86. So using that rule, and we're simply following the rule in order. OK, so be careful with these. We're not using bid mass this time because we're being asked to do one thing and then another afterwards. OK, your turn again then. So you've been given the first term of each sequence and you've been given the rule in two different steps. So make sure you follow the steps in the order that they're written to find the first five terms in each sequence. Pause the video. Have a go now. OK, so the first one then, we started with 5. We've multiplied by 2 and added 1. And we've got 11, 23, 47 and 95. For our second one, we're starting with 7. We're going to multiply it by 2 and then subtract 3. So we get 7, 11, 19, 35 and 67. Our next one, we're starting at 127. Now we're going to subtract one first and then divide that answer by 2. So 127, 63, 31, 15 and 7. And finally, we're starting at 2. We're going to multiply it by 3 and then subtract 4. So 2, 2, 2, 2 and 2. So that's a really interesting one there. Let's just take a little bit more of a look at that one. So if our first term is 2 and we multiply it by 3, that's 6. 6 take away 4 is 2. We've got 2. We multiply it by 3, we get 6. We subtract 4, we get another 2. So 
sometimes you'll come across these really interesting patterns uh, where we just keep ending up going back to the same number. OK, last thing for today, then, is a challenge question. So we're going to try using our knowledge of sequences to help us to solve this question. So Polly is told to exercise her leg after an injury. She exercises for an hour each day for the first week, then decreases the daily time by 12 minutes each week. We want to know in which week does Polly first exercise her leg for less than half an hour each day? In which week doesn't she need to exercise her leg anymore? And do the daily exercise times each week form an arithmetic sequence? So at this point, you can pause the video if you want to have a go for yourselves or you can work it through with me. All right, then. So for this sort of question, it's um, easy to set up a table to help us to work it out. So uh, I've set up a table with the number of weeks across the top. I've just put in an arbitrary number of weeks so far. And along the bottom, I've got how many minutes uh, she is going to exercise her leg for. Now, we were told then in the first week she needs to exercise her leg for an hour. So one hour is 60 minutes. It then says each uh, week she's going to decrease that time by 12 minutes. So 60 minus 12 gives us 48. For week three, we get to 36. Week four, we get to 24. Week five, we've got to 12. And week six, we've got to zero. So now that we've got the table, we should be able to answer the question. So in which week does Polly first exercise her leg for less than half an hour? So half an hour is 30 minutes. So we want a number that's smaller than 30 minutes. So the first one smaller than 30 is 24 minutes, which is in week four. Our second one then, in which week doesn't she need to exercise anymore? Well, we can see that when we get to week six, she's got zero minutes, so she's not exercising at all. So in week six, she can stop exercising her leg. And finally then, do the uh, daily exercise times for an arithmetic sequence. To form an arithmetic sequence, you need to go up or down by the same amount each time by adding or subtracting. From 60 to 48, we subtracted 12, subtract 12, subtract 12. So we're subtracting 12 each time. So yes, it goes down by 12 each time. OK, thank you for working through that today. Then next lesson, we're going to be having a look at nth term rules and a way of predicting um, terms further down the list.